Now, more than ever with COVID and the pandemic wrapping up, it is so important that we develop technical skills. Engineers are always gonna be in demand and it's a great career path for people who love to learn and aren't afraid of a little hard work. So let's go over five ways you could become an engineer in 2022. The first step is to pick a branch of engineering. So the three main branches are electrical engineering, civil engineering, and mechanical engineering. So electrical engineering is like computer science. You have a little bit of circuits. There's kind of, you get the electrical vibes as you would imagine, because it's electrical. Civil, you're gonna deal with like bridges, soil, environmental, those kind of aspects. Mechanical is what I did, so it's my personal favorite. And you're gonna deal with thermodynamics, heat transfer. You're gonna do a little bit of civil in the sense that you're gonna do fluids and kind of some structural stuff. And then you're also gonna do a little bit of electrical in the sense that you do computer science and you do take a couple circuits classes and electromagnetics, stuff like that. So that's why I chose mechanical engineering because it is so diverse. Now there are other degree plans that are more specific like chemical engineering and industrial engineering, but I'm not gonna go over those because most of those are like specialty schools. So the three main ones just focus between electrical, civil, and mechanical. The biggest tip I have is focus on the job first. So what I recommend doing is going onto a bunch of job applications and start reading what jobs are out there and what degrees they have to do that job. So it's very important because when I was doing this, I just chose and dove into mechanical engineering and I didn't think about like, oh, what would I want to do when I graduated? So that is the biggest tip here. I wish somebody had told me, look at jobs and then go and pick the branch after you determine kind of what job you want. You also wanna consider where do you wanna work? Do you wanna work in an office in like a cubicle or do you wanna go out in the field and kind of be on your feet all day? You also kinda of wanna consider money. Some engineers make more money than other engineers. Typically, mechanical, electrical, they make more money than civil. But like, again, it's, it, it's very general, so don't take it like for my word, but just kinda of do your research before you pick a branch of engineering. Step number two is to get a Bachelor of Science degree. Now this is a four year university, but I wanna break this up into two steps, right? So if you don't have money and you don't have good grades, you're at a bit of a disadvantage here. So you're gonna be focusing on community college. You want transferable credits or taking enough credits in high school and transferring them over because that will be your cheapest route and you can't really bank on scholarships because you don't have good grades. Now, if you don't have money, and have good grades, you're in kind of what I was in, and that's where I just applied for tons of scholarships and then went to a four-year university. But I also took classes at community colleges so that it wasn't so expensive each semester. To tell if your college will do transferable credits, you can just call the four-year university and then ask for a list of the local community college classes that you could transfer credits over. That's how I did it. It was super easy, but it just takes a little bit of digging. Now, if you do have money, then you don't really need this step of taking like, you know, obscure college classes through the community colleges. You just go to your four-year university. It doesn't matter if it's an Ivy League or not. I went to the University of Portland. It was not an Ivy League and I make plenty of money and I am also an engineer. So don't worry about that aspect of it. The third step is to get hands-on experience. That's in the form of internships, research, or councils. Now internships, you're gonna do either a summer internship or throughout the school year if you can fit it in. Research, you can do that in the summer or during the year with your professors or councils, which you can join a student body council or president of the engineering council, or just get involved to grow your network. The next step is to take the professional exam. Now, this is totally optional because you don't necessarily need it to work as an engineer. It's mainly for people who are stamping drawings or approving drawings or doing any of that technical stuff. Now, I was never going to do it, so I never took the FE exam. And then you work under an engineer or a professional engineer, PE, for four years and then go take your PE exam. I chose not to do that, but I wish I would have taken the FE just in case I wanted to transition and do that. And all the education and all the formulas is all stuck in your head right after college. So I just suggest getting out of the way just in case you want to navigate and switch in that direction. Okay, the last and final step is to apply for the job. Now, how do you get a job? You've done your four years, you did your internship. Well, you can extend your internship. So that's option one, is extending your internship, kind of using that network, saying, hey, I would love to continue this as a full-time position. Number two, you could potentially message people on LinkedIn. So cold messaging saying, hey, I noticed you're in the field 
you're doing kind of what I want to do, would love to grab some coffee and chat. Don't worry, it doesn't sound that awkward. Third, you can also introduce yourself to friends and family and just be like, hey, I'm looking for a job. Do you know any engineers? And you'll be surprised how many people would like to help a smart student. Now that we've gone over the five steps to become an engineer, let's go over kind of how I got into engineering. So I kind of chose mechanical engineering because I did not understand the differences between the degrees. So I just chose something that was super diverse. And then I did a research um, internship kind of thing with NASA Ames. So that's how I started doing that internship, like I said previously. And then I met some people being on the president of the engineering council. And I did a speech or something and I met a couple people who are working at JE Dunn Construction and that's how I got my first job. Then I graduated and then when I started my first job, um, there's a money aspect, right? You get you get a certain amount of money when you start and I think mine was around 65k I think it would be a bit more if you started now because inflation and all that good stuff But don't worry. That's like at your base step. That's your base salary. It'll only go up from there I would not negotiate too much with your base salary just because you have no experience yet unless you had some really cool internships and they're totally related but me going from NASA to construction didn't really like give me great vibes as far as what I'd be doing. So I chose not to negotiate, but it's okay because it's only, how long has it been? Like three years since that last job and I'm making more than double that. So don't worry about the money, just get the job and then the money will find itself to you. That is five steps to start off your career as an engineer. Now, if you're interested in seeing how to get promoted once you landed your first job, click here. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.